The Pentagon has five sides. The Pentagon tells lies. The Pentagon created the disease that they thought you got from guy on guy. Well, today we're gonna find out. But in order to do so, we gotta talk about... That's right, we're talking about the KGB in this video, folks. If you couldn't tell, you thought it was just the CIA that sucked, huh? No, ma'am. No. The commie's dead, too. Everybody sucks. Ev everything is terrible. The world is terrible. Get used to it. Also, I can't hear sh with this thing like this, and I'm sweating like a dog, so I'm just gonna put it up. Up here. Let's let's see how long I can last on this thing. I live in Texas. It's hot. When it comes to tactical disinformation, Russia's been playing 4D chess almost as long as they've been vomiting vodka and boinking borscht. The only thing a Russian might want to spend his Tuesday afternoon doing more than spreading fake news is cranking some Darude sandstorm with the boys while drifting a square car off a 10-story apartment building before climbing an industrial crane and bribing a cop with a luxury tracksuit. And even then, I still think it's kind of a toss-up. The Russian impulse to pull an epic geopolitical fib out of its ass and then yell April Fools if anyone calls them on it has been baked into their political strategy since at least the 1920s. Don't believe me? Well, in 1923, communist gigachad and mustache enthusiast Joseph Stalin ordered the creation of a government office to be used exclusively for producing disinformation. A former member of the Romanian secret police who later defected to the United States named Ion Mahai Pachepa actually claimed that Stalin single-handedly coined the term disinformation in 1923, giving it a French-sounding name so that people thought the practice was invented in France, using a translation of the French word desinformation. And that is quite the mind f right there. I mean, the term used for intentional deception was itself an intentional deception. Uh, that's like some Deceptionception. And it will be like a taco inside a taco within a Taco Bell that's inside a KFC within a mall that's inside your grave! And honestly, this type of disinformation, this intentional deception, Kind of a good strategy, if you think about it. A bit of a big brain move. I mean, why physically fight a guy to death when you can just tell his wife that he gave you chlamydia that he caught from that bitch receptionist at work and wait for her to do the dirty work for you when she inevitably smothers him to death with one of these silly fur hats while whispering, Yeah, Odin's lawyer Who cares if you actually got the chlamydia from your cousin Igor? That's not what matters, okay? That is irrelevant information here. The truth is not important, comrade. In fact, the more ridiculous the lie, the better. 5G fries your brain cells? Uh, that kind of sounds like science. Too believable. It's gotta be a lie. The CIA killed John F. Kennedy? That one's just true. Hillary Rodham Clinton diddled kids in the basement of a DC-based pizza restaurant? Winner! By the way, I am not saying that any of those are true, okay? This video is for entertainment and educational purposes only. Nothing that I say should be treated as fact. So, to be clear, I am not spreading misinformation anywhere in this video, okay, YouTube? That was a joke. Jokes are real sarcasm exists. I know it must be so hard to tell when somebody's somebody's being sarcastic, when thing is, something is just a joke. It must be incredibly difficult. But see, that was an example. That was sarcasm. Could you tell? If not, uh, we got a problem here. <laughs> the Soviets had guidelines for producing their fake news, which they euphemistically referred to as active measures, and making the lie so ridiculous that nobody would believe somebody could have actually made it up was only one move in the playbook of the USSR's Department A, the dedicated disinformation wing of the KGB. A very creative name right there, I might add. I, I guess Department 1 was already taken. They had departments for all of their other insane backwards letters too. This is a pregnant soap dispenser. This is a non-pregnant soap dispenser. But there's a reason that that prestigious first letter went to the department responsible for producing their active measures, aka disinformation. Okay, that did not last very long. I gotta take this thing off. It's like being in a sauna in here. Oh my good lord. Oh, that's so much better. This shirt is not the coolest either. It's made out of corduroy, but so much better, leagues better. Through interviews with Ladislaw Bittman and Yuri Bezmenov, two defected members of the KGB, we have learned that 80% of the money the Soviet Union spent abroad was used for the purpose of, quote, ideological subversion. And strategic deception was so important to the Soviets that every officer was instructed to spend at least 25% of their time coming up with possible disinformation campaigns. Which is, um, an insane amount. 
That, that is an insane amount of time to be doing that. I would love to have been in that daily briefing. All right, comrades, I know you're all ready to share your ideas, but word just came in from Stalin that today we actually get pizza day. No work today. Just pepperoni and pointy hats. Really? Oh, wow. I'm actually more of a plain cheese guy. I'm just kidding. <laughs> you should have seen your faces. You just got deceived, all of you. And that counts as my contribution for the day. Ivan. Uh, you come up with anything? Okay, so you know how Americans love burger, right? A burger this, burger that. Big gun boobies burger. Yeah, that's right. Oh, they do do that. Well, what if we do something with that? What if we do something with that? Yeah, I think it really has potential. No! No, please! No, please, no! I cannot die! I have a family! I have six kids! I have six kids I to feed! <laughs> Private Smirnoff, what you got? Okay, so what if we make them think uh, condoms cause cancer, but also that unprotected sex causes cancer also as well? Oh, I like that one. I feel like it's missing just a little something, though. Oh, not having sex at all also causes cancer. Oh my god, that's fucking genius. I can't even- You know what? Just take my job. That's it. I'm done. Just take it. Best idea I've heard since we made them think they all have autism. That was a pretty good one, yeah. In addition to requiring that their agents spend a quarter of their time basically just staring at the ceiling, thinking of ways to erode the fabric of capitalist society, during their year-end review, every KGB member was evaluated based on how many active measures they came up with during that year. And this is actually one of the reasons our old bear-riding pal Putin was able to rise through the ranks of Russian politics as well as he did. He was pretty good with coming up with those, those active measures. He's dissing that information all day long. Some other Soviet-era active measures of note include the claim that rich Americans were buying poor children through Latin American black markets to harvest their organs, as well as their claim that the CIA assassinated JFK, John Paul II, Elmo, probably. They said the CIA whacked everybody, bro. The KGB used 250 active measures against the CIA in 1974 alone, so... You know, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they said the agency tried to kill the Christian god himself. And, of course, the claim that HIV was a bioweapon created and released by the Pentagon. No, no, not that Pentagon, you silly billy, stupid, stupid f***ing idiot. We're not talking about this, or this, we're talking about this! I'm sure somebody in the Kremlin was getting some firm, congratulatory ass slaps for coming up with that one. And this little lie would end up snowballing into one of the strangest and most successful disinformation campaigns in Soviet history, which would come to be known as Operation Infection. The whole thing started with one special little patriot. Well, THE patriot. No, not that, not the film. 1962. India. The KGB sets up The Patriot, an Indian-based newspaper secretly controlled by the Soviets for the purpose of publishing disinformation. Flash forward to 1983. An editor at The Patriot receives an anonymous letter from a, quote, well-known American scientist and anthropologist. You may notice that the term anonymous and well-known American scientist are both used in the same sentence there, which leads me to believe that this guy was just like, hey, I'm a well-known American scientist. Yes, yes. Oh, my name? Uh, what my name is, you ask? Uh, there's no time for names. What are you, crazy? There's AIDS afoot. Basically the equivalent of a guy with no traceable information posting to Reddit like, I'm the proud owner of the Guinness Book of World Record for biggest dick in the entire world. It's 13 and a half feet wide. Ask me anything. This well-endowed American scientist claimed that HIV was a result of the Pentagon's bioweapons operations and pointed toward a group of CDC workers who had been sent to Latin America and Africa as proof. Sounds like some rock-solid evidence at this point, right? Airtight. So, some people went to a place? God damn, that's incriminating. This team from the CDC, the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, was sent out to find, quote, dangerous viruses currently unknown to Asia and Europe. And after they returned, their samples were analyzed in Atlanta and at Fort Detrick, a military base located near the Pentagon. Get gone, they don't hit the Pentagon! Further on in the letter, this scientist, I must repeat, scientist, well-known American scientist at that, definitely not a Russian troll, definitely not fake Russian propaganda, that'd be crazy, uh, states that based on this evidence, the quote, most likely course of events was that the AIDS virus was bioengineered by the US military at the Pentagon by using DNA from these hitherto unknown Latin and African diseases. Which like, uh, yeah, yeah, that, that tracks. 
Sure, why not? <laughs> why, why not? Well, the editor of the Patriot certainly thought so, or was at least thoroughly convinced by his Soviet overlords to think so, because he immediately ran a story in the paper citing the letter with the very laid back and relaxed title of AIDS MAY INVADE INDIA. Notice the word MAY there. This happened so long ago that AIDS hadn't even made it to India yet, or so they thought. The main goal of this campaign at first is shown near the end of a letter from the scientist, where he states that the US is continuing their bioweapons research and operations in neighboring Pakistan, which may lead to the virus spreading to India, hence the, again, very chill title of AIDS MAY INVADE INDIA. So this initial story served not only to destabilize relations between the Indians, Pakistanis, and Americans, but also to set the Soviets up for further plays in the future. I'm telling you, dude, 4D chess. There's a reason that the best thing in the world at chess is always either a Russian or a literal computer. The Soviets preferred to initially publish their conspiracies in a third world country, so there would be less scrutiny on the story at first, and then after the story had either gained credibility or just been forgotten about, further Soviet sources would just reference that initial article they planted in the third world country, and then other sources would reference those second sources, and so on and so on, until eventually you're watching Tucker Carlson say your face is about to be eaten by pandas. The real panda is a secret stud with a taste for flesh and a fearsome bite. The story then goes completely cold for a whole two years, until, just like my asshole after the second trip to Chipotle for the day, it heats right back up again. It was a bad day for my asshole. I'm, I'm still chafing. It's 1985. You're a telegram. Yes, that's right. A telegram. But what do you say, you say? this bit, this is stupid. On September 7th, 1985, the Soviet Union sent a telegram to their allied secret service in Bulgaria. And what did it say? Well, it said beep 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 damn it, I did it again. I gotta hire writers. The telegram said, we are conducting a series of active measures in connection with the appearance in recent years in the USA of a new and dangerous disease, acquired immune deficiency syndrome, AIDS, and its subsequent large-scale spread to other countries, including those in Western Europe. The goal of these measures is to create a favorable opinion for us abroad that this disease is the result of secret experiments with a new type of biological weapon by the secret services of the USA and the Pentagon that spun out of control. They then did this quirky little thing they like to do where they pretended that part of this disinformation campaign that they just made up is in fact true even though they just said that it wasn't true and that they made it up to make people hate America and it's weird, I don't get it. Facts have already been cited in the press of the developing countries, in particular India, they're referring to their own article in The Patriot there, that testify to the involvement of the special services of the United States and the Pentagon in the appearance and rapid spread of the AIDS disease in the United States, as well as other countries. Judging by these reports, along with the interest shown by the US military in the symptoms of AIDS and the rate and geography of its spread, the most likely assumption is that this most dangerous disease is the result of yet another Pentagon experiment with a new type of biological weapon. This is confirmed by the fact that the disease affected initially only certain groups of people, homosexuals, drug addicts, and immigrants from Latin America. And that last bit was basically the Soviets telling the Bulgarians to slant their reports toward the idea that the US created AIDS specifically to target quote undesirables such as homosexuals, black people, immigrants, the poor, Magic Johnson, and then it just got out of hand and started unintentionally infecting, like, you know, straight white men. And honestly, they picked a pretty good angle for this lie. I mean, I already know it's not true, and I'm still convinced as hell right now. It, it totally sounds like something Reagan would do. I mean, the strategic release of a secret virus designed to wipe out the mustache men and their leader Freddie Mercury, and then when it gets out of hand, just to tell everybody that it was caused by unprotected monkey butts and Pretty sure the Gipper might just get down with that. I, I think he can get pretty jiggy with that one. Win just one for the Gipper. And on that note, during this research, I reached a point where I was like, where did AIDS come from? I mean, for the most part, I've gotten most of my historical and nutritional advice from Family Guy, so I did unironically believe that AIDS did indeed originate from unprotected monkey butts. And I have put butter on a Pop-Tart, but let me tell you, 
it was not freaking good. So now, for necessary context, a brief story of what really happened with HIV. Line. HIV stands for Human Immunodeficiency Virus, and various species of primates have been plagued with SIV, Simian Immunodeficiency Virus, for at least 30,000 years, and probably much longer. By far and away, the major theory is that humans contracted HIV in some way from the SIV in monkeys. And we know HIV is a sexually transmitted disease, so... You know, that's just basic math, right? 2 plus 2 equals 4, sex disease plus monkey disease equals sex with monkey disease, right? <laughs> Wrong! When HIV was first discovered in humans, people didn't know what the hell it was, where the hell it came from, or where the hell it go. All people had to go off at that time was the fact that it seemed to only affect gay men. The first official discovery of HIV was in New York City in 1981, when a doctor treated five gay men who had all gotten really rare cancers and diseases that young, healthy people should just not be getting. Because the majority of people presenting with this new virus were homosexual, this created a lot of stigma around the disease, and before the virus had an official name, led people to call it the gay disease, GRID, which stood for Gay Related Immune Deficiency, or simply as gay cancer, which clearly is a very offensive term which should only be reserved for James Charles. Hi, it's theorized that the disease may have spread to humans multiple times throughout history, but it was just never able to properly take hold until the advent of global travel and commercialism. But it is thought that this current AIDS epidemic first made it to humans near the forests of the Congo in Africa in 1908. By the 1920s, the disease had made it downriver into the Dutch colonial city of Leopoldville, which was apparently the Wild West of Africa at the time because there was barely any women living there other than prostitutes. Which obviously didn't, y you know, help stop the spread of you know, AIDS. In addition, this was before disposable syringes had been invented, and nurses in Leopoldville were trying to treat tons of Dutch colonialists for tropical diseases like malaria with a limited number of syringes. So these nurses would basically just rinse them off in alcohol and then jab it into the next guy, which also not great for AIDS. Well, actually, I guess that would be great for AIDS itself. You know, the, the virus would probably be having a great time, but uh, you, not, you know what I mean. The virus then made it to Haiti by the 1960s, where it spread very quickly, most likely due to a place on the island where people were paid to donate plasma that, for some reason, had a machine that mixed all of the donated blood together like some kind of vampire margarita, which, again, just so not great for not giving people AIDS. Also, like, how would that even work? I mean, how would you do transfusions if you don't even know what blood type the, the blood is? It's all full of AIDS and nobody knows what it is. I guess it must have been mixed by blood type, you know, like all the O's are together, because if not, what could you fucking do with that shit? I mean, were they just using it for props and slasher movies or something? The disease then eventually entered the United States through a Haitian immigrant, roughly around 1969, where it spread quietly for the next 12 years until its discovery in New York City. And I feel like I'm forgetting something here. Monkey butt sex. So, the disease is thought not to have come from humans happily humping hairy humanoid homunculi homo erogenously, but instead from a taste for bushmeat. And no, not that bushmeat, okay? I just said it wasn't that, you dirty, dirty little fellow. It's hypothesized the disease actually entered the human population through a hunter who would have been butchering a primate for food in the Congo, who would have gotten the infected monkey's blood either in a cut on his hand or possibly in his eyes or mouth. So there. Hopefully that clears that question up. Before AIDS had a name, back when people still called it gay cancer, many religious groups throughout the country saw the disease as a plague sent from God upon homosexuals and drug users and sinners and such, and a lot of the sentiment carried over into then-President Ronald Reagan's conservative government, who were inclined to not do so much about the disease than if it affected, say, straight rich white men, for example. I mean, think about a totally hypothetical virus that does not reflect my opinion on any real-world non-fictional one, YouTube, this is a made- this is a made-up thing. Let's call it, uh, Brovid14. It's a totally hypothetical virus that would basically just be a bad flu for 90% of people, but hey, it might kill a rich old white man. 
And uh, who has all the power and makes all of the rules in the country? Well, uh, it appears to be old rich white men that look like if Franklin the Turtle decided to hang out in an actively running microwave. Looking at you. Mitch McConnell. A guy looks like a wax figurine of Skeletor if he was left outside on a hot summer Sunday. So hypothetically, because of this disease, they would probably lock the entire world down for eh, roughly two years, but a deadly virus that stays with you until death and ruins lives for entire populations? Well, it's only affecting the people that we don't particularly care for, so, you know. Them. Whatever. So, yeah, the US definitely did not handle this particular situation very well. But do I really think that they actively created the virus to use as a bioweapon against gays and immigrants? Yeah, yeah, it sounds about right. I'm just kidding. I do not believe that. But the Russians certainly did. So, let's get back to them. Let's see what they're up to. But first, finally, ladies and gentlemen, the moment has come that nobody has been asking for. I got merch. That's right, at long last, you, yes you, I'm talking to everybody except for Derek, can get your hands on a shirt, sticker, and or fridge magnet that finally has the guts to say what we're all thinking. See, for a long time now, I've been trying to educate the general public on the well-known truth that British people are not real. And now you, my lovely viewers, can also spread that important message by scrolling down to that little, uh, that little shop section under my videos and checking out a variety of items with that very same message. Okay guys, so it turns out that Google hates me even more than I thought apparently, so my account to be able to sell it on YouTube is currently suspended, so I am going to put a link in the description to the actual store where you can go and find the merch or I will leave it as a pinned comment. Or you can just go straight to the website. It is necessarydrip.com. Thank you guys. Get the shirts, wear the drip, get the magnets. Stick the sticker, bro. Thank you. I personally bought the shirt a little big for me uh, because I wanted to use it as a sleep shirt. And uh, it's surprisingly comfortable. So I'm glad that I got it as a sleep shirt because this, this, this shit f***ing, I can sleep in this hoe. Breathable material. I haven't actually used the sticker yet because my car's transmission just took a shit and I'm hopefully gonna get another one soon. And I really wanna slap it on there as us white trash are want to do. But my personal favorite, honestly, might just be the fridge magnet uh, because when I'm going to get my mac and cheese out of the, out of the freezer, I just, I, I love to be reminded that British people are, are they're, they're just not real. Paul McCartney, Queen Elizabeth, Austin Powers, they're fictional, dude. They're not real, they're, they're mythical creatures. There is no Easter Bunny, there is no Tooth Fairy, and there is no Queen of England. Shockingly, there are still people out there that are not aware of this indisputable fact. If you don't see it under this video, go to my channel. There is a shop section. Uh, check that out and see it there. Uh, YouTube, I don't think, puts this this bar on demonetized videos, which is the whole reason I even made the merch, because they keep demonetizing everything like they've forgotten that I still have to eat. I love all my patrons on Patreon helping me out. I hope to do this full time one day, but I really just can't if YouTube keeps demonetizing everything I make. So here's just another way to support me and also get some very fashionable drip or uh, accessories at, while you're at it. The sticker's huge. I, I think there's other sizes. This one is like the five inch one. Um, it's enormous, you know, really getting that. People are not gonna miss this sign, you know? So check that out, guys. If you buy something, send me a picture to my Instagram. Uh, it should be like on my channel somewhere, the link. I'll put the link in the description or something. Um, and whichever picture that I like the most, I'll, I'll, I'll post on there in like, I don't know, a month or two. I don't know how many people are actually gonna buy this stuff. Once again, thanks to all my patrons on Patreon. If you wanna support me that way, the link is always in the description. And uh, much love, bless up, hope you like it. Back to the video. So, where we last left off, the Russians had just sent the Bulgarians a sultry little telegram telling them to get on board with the narrative that AIDS was invented by the Pentagon and to back that up with the evidence that the virus initially only affected gays, drug addicts, and Latin immigrants, Haitians in particular. One month later, Literaturnaya Gazeta, a Soviet newspaper, which was definitely not another known outlet for KGB misinformation, definitely for sure, no way, that'd be ridiculous, published an article with the title, Panic in the West, or what is behind the sensation surrounding AIDS. And I would imagine that it's typically a burning sensation. The story cited that original article published in The Patriot in India and basically said the same thing, but with a few spicy added details. In addition to the claim that the CDC workers sent to Africa and Latin America to quote, collect the most pathogenic viruses not found in Europe or Asia, secretly being puppets for the Pentagon's bioweapons development, and the claim that HIV was a super virus created by smashing these new diseases' private parts together to form a 
literal AIDS baby, this Soviet article published in Bulgaria also added the claim that the Pentagon tested this new bioweapon in Haiti and the US on marginalized groups including homosexuals, drug addicts, and the homeless. And you know, now that I think about it, this supposedly completely independent Bulgarian Soviet newspaper sounds a suspicious amount exactly like the telegram sent from the KGB to the Bulgarians. Definitely not though, definitely a coincidence. I mean, glorious Mother Russia would never mislead its own comrades. <laughs> Can I see my family now? Niet, make more terrible jokes about telegrams first. Oh yeah, good one, Ivan. Make them do a little dance too. Oh God. This totally legit, completely unbiased article was then reprinted in Kuwait, Bahrain, Finland, Sweden, Peru, and several other countries. And Russia's homie East Germany was not gonna get left out of all this fun either, but determining their exact role in this great AIDS fib is not exactly easy, given that 90% of the documents pertaining to their foreign intelligence division were destroyed or disappeared between 1989 and 1990, roughly around the same time as the fall of the Berlin Wall. But we do know they were definitely involved based on a few things, the first being a draft plan written up by the East German secret police known as the Stasi in 1986 regarding their cooperation with, again, the Bulgarians on something they codenamed Operation Denver. The plan read, Operation Denver, with the goal of exposing the dangers to mankind arising from the research, production, and use of biological weapons, and also in order to to strengthen anti-American sentiments in the world and to spark domestic political controversies in the USA, the GDR, German Democratic Republic side, will deliver a scientific study and other materials that prove that AIDS originated in the USA, not in Africa and that AIDS is a product of the USA's bioweapons research. And that first line there about exposing the dangers of biological weapons to all of mankind is pretty ironic, given that the Soviet Union themselves secretly had the largest, most sophisticated, and longest lasting biological weapons program of any country in the history of the universe. There's actually a theory that this entire AIDS disinformation campaign was really just a ploy to distract from their own bioweapons operations, which, Sounds about right, I can buy that for sure. The Soviets actually had a fair share of real, legitimate biohazard oopsie daisies themselves, the results of which killed hundreds of their own people and almost caused a national epidemic, if not a global pandemic, of a weaponized super virus outbreak on no fewer than three separate occasions. And actually, now that I think about it, given that track record, it's actually a lot more likely that they created AIDS themselves than the Americans. I can at least definitely see where they came up with the idea from now. Hey, Igor, uh, this whole AIDS thing that's going around now, uh, was that us? Well, let's see, let's see. Uh, what did we f up this week? Well, we released anthrax into that elementary school. Mm -hmm. Everyone at the old folks home on 2nd Street has Ebola now. Oh no, not in Gladys. And uh, it seems like the orphans at St. Svedka have developed a real taste for human flesh lately. Wow, zombies, look at us go. But uh, no, no AIDS on this list. I, I don't think we did that one. Oh, really? Huh. Yeah, no, I know, I would have thought so too. Blame it on the Pentagon? Oh yeah, definitely blame it on the Pentagon. But hey, you gotta remember, this is a noble pursuit. I mean, their first primary goal is exposing the dangers of biological weapons to all of mankind, and then the teeny weeny tiny little detail of convincing all the other countries on the playground that America has sexually transmitted cooties and they should stay very far away and maybe just bomb them just a little bit. Priorities in check. And the second reason that we know that East Germany was involved with all this is the Soviets confirming that they played a central role in yet another telegram to the Bulgarians. These fellas really like chatting up these Bulgarians, huh? I, I can just see Gorbachev kicking his little feet around, twiddling the phone wire around his finger while he's spilling all the confidential beans about his plots to dismantle Western society to his Bulgarian boy crush Stanko. And yes, that is an actual Bulgarian name, Stanko. Uh, it means to stand with glory not to stank abhorrently. I pride accuracy very highly on this channel. The telegram was titled The AIDS Issue and uh, didn't know telegrams could have titles, but uh, go off, sorry. The telegram said, A complex of active measures regarding this issue has been carried out since 1985 in cooperation with the East German and to some extent the Czech colleagues. In the initial stage, the task was resolved of spreading in the mass media the version regarding the artificial origin of the AIDS virus and the Pentagon's involvement in it by means of the military biological laboratory at Fort Detrick. As a result of our joint efforts, it was possible to widely disseminate this version. A real group effort going on here. Got, got, a, got a bunch of real team players on the uh, on the AIDS brigade. So if you were paying attention, which 
I wouldn't blame you if you weren't. I mean, Germans, Bulgarians, Soviets, AIDS, anthrax, orphans, blah, 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 blah. Who would listen to this shit? You may have noticed that the East Germans told the Bulgarians that their side would provide a, quote, scientific study that would prove AIDS was a Pentagon-created bioweapon. And yes, they actually did send a scientific report by a scientist who studied, believe it or not, science. But who exactly was this scientist? Bill Nye? Not quite. That would be, that would be f***ing hilarious though. But still, he was undeniably a science guy. Beer is Beer is his name was Jacob Siegel, uh, but his name is, you know, foreign-y, so it might be a uh, Jacob Seagal, I don't know. Jacob was your pretty average standard guy, a little boring, not much of a backstory. Uh, he was a Russian-born East German Jew who fled with his wife into an underground workers' resistance group during World War II before his entire family died in the Holocaust, with the exception of his wife, who narrowly escaped Auschwitz after surviving in the forced labor camp for more than a year. Oh, God. Oh, that bored the shit out of me, man. After the war, he then escaped to Lithuania for protection and Soviet citizenship, was roped into working as an unofficial private Soviet informant for the East Germans, was sent to communist Cuba for scientific research, and then finally convinced the Kremlin to let him retire in the 70s before 10 years later when the East Germans were like, Hey, buddy, uh, we told our boy crush, I mean manslot, I mean comrades in Bulgaria we'd give him something. Uh, can you do us a small favor and fabricate a 47-page treatise proving the scientific fact that the Pentagon created AIDS, please? Oh, and can you also say they uh, tested it on gay prisoners, for sure, for definite? Also, you are French now, and have always been French, not Russian, to get away from any possible connection to the Soviets. And, uh, by the way, we'll kill you if you don't, so thanks, buddy. Thank you, champ. In his report, Siegel hypothesized more specifically that the AIDS virus was synthesized by combining parts of two distantly related retroviruses, Visna and HTLV-1. Here's a section of the report. It is very easy using genetic technologies to unite two parts of completely independent viruses. But who would be interested in doing this? Well, the military, of course. In 1977, a special top security lab was set up at the Pentagon's Central Biological Laboratory. One year after that, the first cases of AIDS occurred in the US in New York City. How it occurred precisely at this moment and how the virus managed to get out of the secret hush-hush laboratory is quite easy to understand. Everyone knows that prisoners are used for military experiments in the US. And, well, can't fault him for that one. Look up MK Ultra. They are promised their freedom if they come out of the experiment alive. Siegel makes several other very logical, well thought out, not at all dangerous to society claims that I'm sure were backed up by lots of science, such as suggesting that AIDS could be cured with aspirin, or ultraviolet radiation of the patient's blood to reduce the metabolic activity of microphages, which are host cells for HIV. So basically, by turning the patient into the Incredible Hulk, or getting rid of their headaches. This is, of course, obviously not true. We all know that the real cure for AIDS is an intravenous shot of concentrated money, and that's why Magic Johnson will never die, as proven by scientific powerhouse South Park. Siegel's work was included in a pamphlet originally titled AIDS, Its Nature and Origin, which made up the backbone of the brochure given out during the Soviet AIDS presentation at the summit meeting of the non-aligned movement held in Zimbabwe. The brochure was given the incredibly bland title of AIDS, USA homemade evil not out of Africa. And I uh, I like the word choice with homemade there. Uh, it makes it sound like AIDS was a DIY project you can get on Etsy. And this was when the Soviet's AIDS story really went viral. Uh, no pun intended. After the summit, the news spread across Africa quicker than a Kenyan on crack. The conference was attended by the representatives of more than 100 third world countries, and afterward, the report's claims were reprinted in the press of more than 25 countries in Africa alone. The AIDS story then quickly exploded across the rest of the world, being repeated endlessly in Soviet newspapers, magazines, wire services, radio broadcasts, and television. The story appeared more than 40 times in Soviet media in 1989 alone and received coverage in over 80 countries in more than 30 languages, appearing in countries as far apart and unrelated as Bolivia, Grenada, Pakistan, New Zealand, Nigeria, and Malta. 
The story was spread mostly through leftist and communist media, but a few versions even made their way into independent, totally unrelated non-communist press in countries such as Indonesia and the Philippines. And the Soviets really tried to cover all their bases here. They didn't want any plot holes in this story. To explain why an AIDS outbreak occurred in Africa at the same time as, or before, occurring in America, Moscow claimed that in the early 1970s, a Pentagon-controlled West German lab in Zaire succeeded in modifying the non-lethal green monkey virus into the deadly AIDS virus. The Soviets then claimed that instead of testing a cholera vaccine like the Americans said that they were doing in Africa at the time, they were actually infecting unwitting Zairians with AIDS, causing it to spread throughout the continent, and then when they returned to America, they resumed their experimentation on convicts until the prisoners infected with AIDS escaped, explaining how it simultaneously spread throughout the US. Also, claims that the CIA had sent, quote, AIDS oiled condoms to other countries sprang up in the African press, apparently completely independently of any Soviet involvement, and African believers of the story even ended up closing an actual, legitimate healthcare clinic that was legitimately helping with the malaria crisis in Lahore because of claims that it was intentionally spreading AIDS. For a brief while, the Soviets actually had a shit ton of people, mostly in third world countries, legitimately believing that the virus ravaging their communities was created in a Pentagon lab by the Americans, presumably by Ronald Reagan himself cackling maniacally in a lab coat. But the dream couldn't last forever. You see, AIDS continued to spread, as AIDS is wont to do, and it eventually made its way into the Soviet Union, where their legitimate non-Soviet shill scientists researching AIDS were like, what the hell, guys? This is clearly a natural disease originating from monkeys and not a superbug created by Reagan in a shadowy Pentagon lab. What in the cinnamon toast f are you guys doing here? These Soviet scientists then began, very ironically, turning to American scientists for help with their own country's burgeoning AIDS epidemic, to which the Americans understandably responded, dude, like, for real? Are you actually, are, are you guys fucking serious right now? <laughs> Your government has been convincing everybody that we invented this thing to kill gays and black people and such for years, and now you're asking for our help with it? Like, no, man. Obviously not happening, comrade. So then these actual Soviet scientists started releasing their own reports saying that their own country's AIDS story was fake, dumb, dangerous, and overall a giant stinking load of crackpot nonsense in an effort to get the Americans to come around to helping them. When Jacob Siegel, the scientist from East Germany that created the AIDS story, was pressed on the scientific nature and validity of his paper and claims, he pointed out a teeny tiny little detail that he had included in his paper, stating, quote, My hypothesis was based purely on assumptions, extrapolations, and hearsay, and not at all on direct scientific evidence. Real good disclaimer there, buddy. I, I, I'm kind of proud, honestly. Obviously, almost all the publications reprinting and spreading this story and claims faster than, well, AIDS, elected to omit this little comment, making the whole story seem like legitimate, proven fact. The administration of the last leader of the Soviet Union, Mikhail Gorbachev, then went on the defensive, launching a denial campaign aimed at, quote, limiting the damage done to its credibility by U.S. efforts to raise world consciousness of the scope of Soviet disinformation activities. However, this was around the same time that U.S.-Soviet relations were starting to warm up just a little bit, despite the fact that the Soviets were actively convincing a shit ton of third world countries that America, you know, invented AIDS. I guess they thought that was kind of a small issue in the grand scheme of things. McDonald's and blue jeans were popping up all over the communist bloc, and they really did not want to risk resuming the Cold War and losing their precious chicken McDoubles and dope denim trousers. In order to try and limit the inevitable damage to the Soviet Union's reputation, they sent in the metaphorical bomb squad to try and defuse the absolute explosive shit show that would go down if the Americans managed to convince the rest of the world that the Soviet Soviets intentionally spread disinformation to try and destroy American credibility in third world countries by saying that they created and caused the spread of AIDS. That's, uh, the, the, the international community generally does not look upon that fondly. In 1987, Moscow told US officials that the AIDS story was officially disowned and disavowed, and Gorbachev even apologized to Ronald Reagan in person for the entire debacle. That would be quite the conversation. I would love to see that. Just, hey! Ronnie, uh, uh, man, that was my B. Uh, 
<laughs> convincing the entire world that you uh, you invented AIDS. That was a bit of a miscalculation on my part there. But unfortunately, once a conspiracy is spread on such a massive scale like this, you can never really put the AIDS genie back in the bottle. And still, even to this day, many countries and groups of people, even in the US, still believe that AIDS was invented in a Pentagon lab and intentionally spread throughout the world. In 1992, polls showed that 15% of Americans considered it definitely or probably true that, quote, the AIDS virus was created deliberately in a government laboratory. And in 2005, a study by the Rand Corporation and University of Oregon revealed that nearly 50% of African Americans believed AIDS was man-made, over 25% believed that it was created in the government laboratory, 12% believed it was created and spread by the CIA, which that one is particularly understandable. It's not true, allegedly, but I absolutely cannot fault them for thinking that, and 15% believed that AIDS was a form of intentional genocide against black people. Even globally renowned and respected anti-Semite Kanye West has a line in the song Heard Em Say where he says, quite poetically, I know that the government administer AIDS, and if somebody as consistently reliable, sane, and trustworthy as Mr. West believes it, it's gotta be at least a little bit true. I am absolutely kidding. No, it is not. Or am I? I am. Wow. Just like your mother said to me last night, that was a wild ride. If you could all search your black hearts to subscribe and like this video to help it out in the algorithm, that would be Pog. I, I would enjoy that quite a bit. Also, I have a sneaking suspicion that this video just might get demonetized, uh, like most of my other ones, at least the ones people actually watch. Uh, hopefully not. Hopefully it didn't. I mean, did you see an ad? Did you see an ad? If not, please take a second, please support me on Patreon, link in the description. I hate e-begging, but I, I kind of have to if YouTube won't give me that sweet, sweet ad money. So, you know, if you want me to keep being able to do this, links in the description helps me out a lot. I mean, come on, all the cool kids are doing it. You can get uncensored, ad-free videos on there and a shout out if you subscribe to the higher tiers. And uh, if you text me through Patreon, I'm gonna respond, you know, you give me money. Let's have a chat, man. Let's have a little, let's have a little talk. How could I not? That would be rude. And as always, here's a shout out to those extra cool kids supporting me, my new God tier patrons. Are you are Just a Koala, Zoro Q, Andre S, Riley G, Rena J, Maxman Beta, and Dylan W. And to you beautiful billionaire philanthropists who give me 20 bucks a month. 20 whole smackers, man. It's crazy. You guys are the best. Vladimir S, Elijah, Jonathan, Hara Budica, Jeremy, Eduardo H, Trapper 5446, Girthquake, and Rare Bees. Thank you guys so much. Until next time, I've been your host, Dingalicious Nichols, and always remember to remember to do things. Spay and neuter your pets. I'll be here all week. If you like this cinematic masterpiece of journalism, you may also enjoy my magnum opus exposing the many naughty no-nos of the CIA that you can watch here. Or, more statistically likely if you've already seen it, here's one of my other videos. Click them. Do it now. What are you doing? Click them. Click them. Do it now. Click them, dude. Do it. This is a threat.